T-minus six days and counting till the first Republican debate, and all of us here are going to be watching. It's expected to get huge ratings because, well, of the guy in the white or the red hat, depending on the day or the bad hair every day. I'm talking about the Donald. It could also set the tone for the campaign. Then Hillary Clinton's numbers, they're going the wrong way. In fact, they're falling pretty precipitously. So now there's a push, believe it or not, to get Joe Biden into this race. We're going to tell you why some people are comparing him to the Democrats' version of Donald Trump. Sure, he doesn't like that. Also, how a cheesesteak could impact the presidential race. And Scott Walker, he's going to be uh, talking about um, why you should just go with the flow where in the local neighborhood instead of trying to get all fussy. We'll talk about that as well. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Tonight, we will start with the Republican presidential field and a debate that is just six days away. <laughs> Now, we call them party crashers, and the ultimate party crasher, of course, is Donald Trump. Now, unless you're living under a rock or a hat that says, make America great again, you know that Trump is leading in the polls here, much to the chagrin of the grand old party. Now, the Trump bump, it could give Fox News a huge rating bump next Thursday. New York Magazine says the debate, quote, is likely to attract the biggest audience in cable news history, and it could, in many ways, define the race for more than, let's say, five months before the first votes are cast. Now, other Republicans, they're certainly going to go on offense against the Donald. Here's what Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, also a candidate, had to say. I think this is a temporary sort of loss of sanity, but we're going to come back to our senses and look for somebody serious to lead the country at some point. And he's the voice of reason. Now, it remains to be seen, though, how everyone will respond to Trump on the debate stage. I want to bring in our panel right now, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent, and Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist, former vice chair of the National Black Republican Association, and a man who will be in attendance in Cleveland on Thursday. He's making America great again. Absolutely. I get my hat. I definitely <laughs> in Cleveland. Uh, We've already Republican ordered ours, by the way. You think I'm kidding. Today, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, well, we'll talk about the dynamics and how the debates set up, but, you know, I talked to these guys yesterday. Trump was in Scotland at some golf tournament, I guess, one at his Turnberry course, an LPGA event, and they asked him how he was preparing. And maybe he's full of it. Dominic says he's crazy like a fox. I just think he's crazy. But he said, ah, you know what, I'm going to be me. I'm not really going in too much for this debate prep. He certainly didn't hire a debate coach. Um, do you buy that? Or do you think that he says... I'm going to basically go with what got me here, just talk off the cuff, no substance here, but just say whatever comes to mind, come across as authentic. Or does he say, Jesus, I'm ahead in the polls here. Half the Western world is going to be watching this thing. I might as well try and act presidential at this point. Which way does he go? I think the latter. I think he goes with the same way he's gone before, and it's kind of the direct talk, uh, the, not the, the non-political talk or non-specific in terms of facts, uh, just kind of, you know, we're, we, we were the number one engine in, in, in the United States from the economy, and now China's beating us. We've got to kick the pants off of everybody else. Just that kind of direct talk, because that kind of talk uh, has gotten him <coughs> where he is now. What do I mean by that kind of talk? I mean, when you look at the polls, his, unfa his, uh, his unfavorables are at 59%. 30% of Republicans already said they're not going to vote, vote for him, right? But when you ask about his leadership, 58% of the people say he has those leadership skills, and they like what he's, how directly he's talking about things. So I think he continues with that if he wants to be successful. Does he attack his opponents? Do you think Trump goes on the offensive? Which, I mean, he has been on the campaign. I think, it, I think it's easier for him to attack his opponents, and I think it's harder for his opponents to attack him because you don't know how he's going to react. First guess this, and we're going to show, by the way, what some voters in New Hampshire are, are saying about Donald Trump, and I, it's illuminating for me here. But, Dom, in terms of Trump, I know you said yesterday, don't buy it, he's planning this, although he's already acting he's a little bit. He's lowering expectations. He's trying to. I don't know if no, that can work. No, he's doing a very good job, because if, if you're six days from a debate and you're in Scotland on a golf course, that says that you're not really, you know, focusing, putting all your eggs in the in this one basket for the debate. And so, you imagine but that's now a compliment, like the fact that you're doing a national debate and you're not going to prepare somehow, some way. That's a good thing. But you know why it's a good thing, Richard? 
because people are tired of phony politicians. But you want it, informed ones. Richard, people are tired. Okay, we've had uh, informed politicians no, no, forever. No. Everybody and, loved and Sarah what do we Palin. Get? Everybody loved her at the convention. Then all of a sudden, she can't name a newspaper. Um, she's telling you she can see Russia, you know, from her back right, door. Well, and, that it, it, that, that and all was, of a sudden, that sunk her. Because people like a sideshow until all of a sudden they say, wait a second. I don't want to trust this guy with the red butt. But that was a death of a thousand cuts. I mean, it wasn't just one right. incident that did Sarah Palin in. I'm telling you, as I've been saying from, from day one, Donald Trump's for real. There's a base. This guy is a winner. And that's why Americans love him. But exactly I, right. Because they, people want leadership. And they believe, however false it may be, mm -hmm. that Donald Trump has that leadership. Mm -hmm. But the expectations will still be very high for him. He's oh, the reason absolutely. why so many people are going to be watching. And for a lot of people, it'll be the first time they hear him not in soundbite form, not with a one-liner about McCain, but rather talking for a minute at a time. Oh, I know people think, are watching only for stuff. him. Uh, I would sure. say 90% yeah, of the country. Right. Who Absolutely. else would watch a Republican debate this early? <laughs> but yeah. but, but right if, that's, if that's what's drawing you to the debate, you can't tamp down that expectation because you can try, but everybody's still watching to well, see that guy. No By the way, I know who is going to be watching no matter what. This guy. Uh, he's yeah, he's yeah. going to be out there no I'm, matter I'm, what. I'm, I'm going to be there. Right, now, he's not the only guy on the stage. And one problem with doing any pre-debate analysis, even the campaigns, they're not going to be sure who's on that stage, who'll be in, out, and where on the stage their candidates will be. And this isn't just stagecraft. This makes a big difference. And all those things that I mentioned, they're not up to some debate panel or commission. It's up to Fox News and Fox News only. And there are reports that even Fox staffers don't know. Roger Ailes is essentially, they claim, making it up as he goes along. And it's not, Andrew, just, you know, uh, media folks that are frustrated. You have campaigns saying, at least let us know which polls you're using to right. decide if my guy's the 8th, ninth, 10th, or 11th person in the field. And some of them want to make strategic decisions to try to impact those polls to make sure that they get their place on stage. Look, we know there are going to be 10 candidates on the stage, and the polls won't just determine who's on stage, but where on stage they'll be. The candidate with the best poll numbers, and that's pretty likely to be Donald Trump in the middle of your screen, will be center stage at the debate. Those closest to him on the polls will be closest to Trump on stage, so he'll likely be flanked by Jeb Bush and Scott Walker. And this is how the stage would be set if today's numbers hold. You see Cruz and Kasich on the right side and Carson and Christie on the far left. Candidates with the lowest poll numbers are going to be on the extreme sides of the stage. And as I mentioned right now, that's Christie and Kasich. The candidates who are below 10th place go in what I'm calling the loser's bracket. That's a second debate earlier in the night. Right now that includes Perry, Carly Fiorina, and George Pataki. It appears to be a fight between three candidates for the final two spots. Chris Christie, John Kasich, and Rick Perry. Perry looks to be on the bubble and the odd man out, though that could all change when the polls come out next week. But in my mind, and I, we've, he hasn't got a lot of attention, but if Chris Christie does make the debate stage, he could be the X factor in this debate. He's got low expectations. There's no buzz about his campaign. He's positioning himself as the truth teller. He could be the guy who nominates himself to go after Trump, mix it up with him a little bit, start going after other people. It could be among the most delicious debate moments of all time. Can you imagine Christie and Trump going back and forth? There's not enough with, oxygen with, in that room. With like Carson and Kasich sitting there like, what? What's going well, on? Who do you think, I mean, I, I, I'm with Andrew. I think he's dead on here, that it's Christie who's become irrelevant early. And if he can make himself all of a sudden, um, you know, the guy with the big mouth, but at least a little bit more substance behind it, We've proven one thing. People like at least perceived authenticity. I can't believe I'm saying that about Trump because I don't buy that. But or, anyway. Or Christie. Or, yeah. Who, how does Jeb Bush play this? Look, I think for Jeb Bush, he stays in his lane, and that is a lane in which he talks about his leadership experience as governor, as he talks about his experience of what he has in, in terms of foreign uh, policy. But is that working for him so policy. far, Richard? Well, he's keeping a low profile because, look, he doesn't have to say much. His name speaks for itself. He's raised a lot of money. That says a lot, too. He has to right? act presidential. Of course. Yeah. And, but that's what I'm saying in his lane. Stay as, as, as what we expect our president to be, and that is someone of decor, uh, someone who's going to talk specifically about what they're going to do as president. Slow and steady wins the, wins the race. This firing shots like Trump and bombs, that's not going to do it. They mentioned a couple names here. I mean, it's, it's amazing that a Ted Cruz or a Rand Paul, who we would have said or as crazy as crazy is here six months ago, they're now not even considered in the top tier with the crazy, you know? You give me a name here you think we're going to be talking about Friday other than Donald Trump. No matter what, 
uh, those of us that do this for a living will be analyzing the, the role that Jeb Bush played. And I agree a thousand percent with you. You know, us pundits, we're acting like folks are going to vote tomorrow. This is a long contest. You said early in the show, Richard, the first uh, votes in in uh, in Iowa are not until what five months from now. Yeah. So I think that Jeb Bush, the guy we're looking at the screen, he's got to look presidential, and I, he's got to be in the headline one way or the other. The only person that I don't think Trump will engage if they go negative is Chris Christie. He, why would Trump do that? Why would you put him on your level? I can't believe I'm saying that. But if you're Donald Trump, why would you put somebody that's perceived as a loser and a has-been on your level by engaging him? I, I would just counter one point that Dominic made. I, I do think this is a very significant impact from this debate. There's, it's the first time people are going to be tuning in. It's going to sort of set the tone as to where people are and what people think of the candidates really from now, maybe until we actually get into December and really start approaching those first. You know, I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but if you're Trump, and some of the folks start going after you. I'd have one-liners for all of them. You know, Perry says something, be like, hey, learn the cabinets and then talk to me, okay? Yeah. Or, or Christie said something, be like, you deal with your court cases in Jersey before you lecture anybody on, on anything. And you wouldn't think, certainly that's not the Jeb Bush uh, playbook right. here, but if you're Trump, I can't believe I'm saying this, but why not, you know? B people are gonna wanna laugh as much as learn, I think, on Thursday night. I mean, you got a, a ticket that usually they got to drag of these things. That's a tough ticket that's you a, got. That's, that's, that's it, it, ticket. It's going to be fascinating. And I would pay money to be in those spin rooms when you're going to be there later on <laughs> and to actually try and uh, try and make sense out of the whole thing. Anyway, uh, again, that's uh, coming up this uh, Thursday. Of course, we'll talk quite a bit about it next week. Now, as much as Trump is surging, and even if it's just for the 15 minutes here, there is numbers going south for Hillary, and trust me, people aren't discarding it as just, oh, uh, slow summer numbers here. So why all of that is getting people talking about crazy Uncle Joe, the vice president, Mr. Biden, reportedly starting to think about running and folks pushing him, not just from the fringes here, saying maybe it's his time.